Prima Media's policy, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sutna, here to unpack his column titled, The Crisis of Our Times Cannot Be Resolved Simply by Electing New ANC Leaders. We Need a New Alignment of Forces. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you. You speak of the ANC dying not simply as an electoral force, but as a moral and intellectual side of debate. Is that true when one considered the debate evoked by Tourism Minister Lindu Sisulu's attack on the judiciary and the constitution? Well, when I was involved, we used to be debating all the time. How do we get to a particular political destination? What forces do we need? How do we win over this lot of people? How do we neutralize these people who are the enemy or whatever it is? Or likely to, if they're likely to side with the enemy, how do we win them over? That was when we fought the apartheid regime. And in the period afterwards, there were debates as to even before uh, NC won the election, there were debates as to what is the best course best direction to take afterwards. And that changed over years because there was a lot of debate and there were lessons to be learned from what had happened in other countries. The uh, reactions to Mandiwa Sisulu's uh, various interventions in the last week or two is not really a debate. It's um, a sort of populist intervention uh, attacking uh, the judges and the constitution, which has done more to better the lives of poor people than the ANC. Um, for example, the Groetboom case about housing, a number of these cases are situations when an unelected judiciary has absorbed the values of the constitution and done its best to better the conditions of the people of South Africa. And I think that we are, would be very wrong to treat the judiciary as captured by uh, big capital or white people and things like that. It's just completely wrong. There are certainly some judges who do not perform their job adequately. But the judiciary has come to the rescue of South Africa at a time when uh, Zuma and his followers were busy betraying the constitution and they were found by the courts to not to be complying with legality and with democracy. And why are you so critical of the media focus on ANC elections? Is it not important who leads the ANC? What I'm critical of is that they are just focusing on personalities. Who is in whose camp, who may be on this ticket, who may be deputy president, all of this. Now, what is important to us is not the faces but what the faces and brains stand for. What do they believe in? What does it matter what they believe in? How important is it that this person has this tendency rather than another tendency? And I think it's important that the media stops being fixated on what they call the elective conference. We never used to use that term elective conference. It was just a conference which discussed strategy, tactics, and all sorts of things, endorsing what had happened at the policy conference or not endorsing it. And then they were also having elections, but they're just calling it an elective conference. It's a new term invented by the press. And lastly, you speak of augmenting the power of the vote by new alliance of forces, including business, popular movements, and so forth. How do you suggest this can come about since there is no history of some of these groups working together? Now, when you are dealing with organizing, you do not expect to have results in five minutes. You have to talk to people, 
talk to them again, talk to them again. You have to meet with them. You have to hear what their problems are. You have to try and find compromises because business and uh, a number of the more popular forces are not natural partners, but we are in a crisis situation. And in the Zuma era, business was very involved in bringing Zuma down. So business has shown that it has a pro-constitutional uh, orientation. And it's very important to build on that. And I quoted Tabo Beki explaining how business, has, it's not the public sector, that business that has created most of the jobs in South Africa in the last few decades. Business is also uh, a stable force. And it needs a stable country, which is not beset by violence and disruptions of various sorts. So that we need in an alliance that is being built forces that are committed to constitutionalism, committed to nonviolence, committed to peace, committed to creating a better life for all. Now, business is not the same as socialism and things like that, but business needs stability and they understand that it's better to improve uh, things for ordinary people. Like Carol Payton's got an article about uh, 91, the Investec investment group, creating a bo putting a, up a borehole for people in the popo. Now that is an example of the sort of thing where business has got resources, if they are part of a broader alliance, maybe that they can be persuaded to do more of that. Now, some uh, of the movements would be uncomfortable about, about working with business, but we're in a crisis and we've got to look uh, at what are stable forces and business is more stable than the political forces at the moment. I'm not suggesting that only forces outside of parliament can be part of it. If people in parliament are prepared to join in uh, a movement to recover our democracy, recover our constitutionalism, will be very good because it would be good to have this as broad as possible. So my suggestion is not based on close contact with business or close contact with a number of the, the forces that are mentioned, like professionals. Well, I've got some contacts with some of the professionals, but I think forces like the legal profession, the medical profession, including nurses, social workers, things like this, are already caring about the conditions of the poor and the hungry in South Africa, because they know that some conditions are brought about by inequality in South Africa. Faith-based organizations are concerned with this. But you also have groupings like the Gift of the Givers who have done stepped in to do things which government is not doing. Apart from that, I mentioned that we've got a resource amongst the ordinary population of, the South, Af of South Africa where people perform acts of kindness. And we don't factor that in as a resource for rebuilding the country. And I think it's important to do that. So it's not something that I can say this can be, I, have a, I don't have a blueprint. It means that if I'm correct in identifying these, then they can talk and maybe develop something. If I'm not correct, then they can debate it and suggest other combinations. But I think we've got to find a way beyond what we have at the present. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's polity about the crisis of our times cannot be resolved simply by electing new ANC leaders. We need a new alignment of forces.